So in the last video, I went over how the way that most people skate and live can lead to imbalances in things like strength and function within their body and how this can lead to injury risk, pain and just all out worse skating. I gave some exercises to work on these things and in this video, I'm gonna be dropping the four best methods to work on these imbalances when you're actually skating to just get you skating better and to reduce that injury risk and pain. So let's get it. So the main goal with most of these tasks is literally just to spend more time in our other stance, balancing out the work and movements that each side of the body does. Because if we're skating in just one stance all the time, each side of our bodies are doing completely different things. And over time, that's one of the things that can lead to imbalances. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by just dropping a little tip that will help you feel more comfortable actually skating in a switch stance. So when I'm skating in my normal stance, I'm pushing and I'm facing forwards in my head. It's pretty much straight in a straight line. When we go switch, the body's much more closed off and the head stays more closed and angled in that direction as well. Especially when you're actually doing tricks, not just like actually pushing switch. So this method is literally just trying to keep your head in that same position as you have it in when you're skating in your normal stance. So if I'm pushing switch, I'm really trying to just keep my head facing directly forwards. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create a bit of similarity between the two stances and it's not gonna be so foreign for you. You know, your brain's gonna be like, oh, actually there's some similarities between these two stances and it's not as weird as I once thought it was. So method number one to work on these imbalances is a real simple one that's gonna pretty much change nothing about your session. It's the old switch cruise return delivery. So let's say you're trying a certain trick on a specific obstacle. Let's say it's a no slide variation and you're starting off in the same position every single time. You're rolling up, you got your weight on that front leg, you pop into the no slide, you got your weight on that front leg and then you cruise back to the starting point and you got your weight on that front leg as well. Depending on how long the session is and how much you're battling that trick, that could be literally hours of time spent on one leg and literally nothing on that other leg other than just to pop yourself into the actual trick. So the other day I was trying to get no slide nollie heels a bit more consistent and I was applying this method. So what it is, is as you're rolling back to that starting point, you literally just swap over into your other stance, into the switch stance and just cruise with your weight heavy on that side. So let's say I'm rolling up, I'm pushing, I've got my weight on the front leg. I'm gonna try and get into the no slide. Boom, I'm gonna try and flip out. It doesn't work, gotta go back to the starting point. So I'm gonna now cruise back with my weight on that front leg, on the opposite leg in that switch stance. So just a real simple way of just getting a little bit of rest time for that opposite leg before you come back and actually try again. So the second skate task is the most obvious, the most difficult and also the most important all at the same time. It's something that's gonna make even skaters who've been skating for years uncomfortable. And it's literally just spending more time cruising switch, getting out in the streets, skating between spots, skating to the park, skating to the shop to get some Weetabix in your switch stance. But this is such a simple way to really like accumulate that switch time because you can go long distances actually in that switch stance. Whereas when you're at the park, you know, trying different tricks, you're not actually spending too much time on that other leg. Now I get it, even if you've been skating for years, pushing switch can make you feel like a disabled mule that only started about a week ago. I fully understand it's uncomfortable and you're gonna feel weird. You're maybe even gonna look weird. And that's totally right because in the same way that you've got to where you're at now with just practice and time, you can do the exact same shit with learning to get more comfortable with your switch stance as well. Now this isn't only gonna help with imbalances and getting you more comfortable skating switch, but maybe most importantly, the biggest benefit that's gonna come from this is getting more comfortable with discomfort. That's something that's so important, not just for skating, but just for all areas of life as well. So a couple of years ago, I decided that I was really gonna start committing time to getting more comfortable skating switch. And even for someone like me, who's been skating for 20 plus years, spending time pushing switch in the streets was so uncomfortable. Like. Every time I was faced with like a little challenge in the street, like maybe the need to switch roll off a curb or switch pop over an acorn or avoid a granny coming my way, I would usually just switch back to my regular stance, avoid the discomfort. But the problem with this is we don't end up just avoiding time in that other stance, but we also end up avoiding all these different situations that are gonna get us feeling more comfortable actually skating switch. So some tips to get more comfortable with cruising switch is number one, just picking an area where it's pretty chill. There's not a lot of traffic, grandma, to avoid just a nice open bit of flat where you can just get comfortable pushing in the other stance remembering to keep the head facing forwards so once you feel a bit more comfortable just cruising around switch you're gonna start adding a little bit of sass to it all right so let's say you're cruising through the streets and there's an acorn on the ground i want you to try and 
tic-tac around the acorn. I want you to roll off the curb switch. Just doing these kind of real basic simple things that you might not really think will actually add up and have any effect on your skating, but giving your brain and body more movement options in that switch stance is gonna be just massive for getting you feeling more comfortable switch and then being able to actually spend more time in that switch stance working on those imbalances. So as you're cruising switch in the streets and maybe you're faced with an obstacle, you'll probably have that urge to just switch back to your normal stance just to avoid it. But these are the exact uncomfortable emotions that we want to start facing. So when you feel that urge to swap back to your normal stance, just do your best to become aware of those feelings. Notice the sensations. What are you feeling? Where are you feeling them? Is it a hot emotion in your chest? Is it a bit of tingliness in your gooch? Whatever it might be, just observe those emotions, observe those negative sensations that you're experiencing and even give them a name. So you can be like, those emotions are the switch push, abort, last second pull out emotions or whatever you want. And then when you notice them in the future, just give them that same name being like, oh, there they are, same shit, those same category of emotions. This can be so useful because it's often these really strong emotions that just automatically trigger us to do a certain action or to have a certain behavior. But by adding that little bit of separation and that awareness of them, it can give us the realization that we have the option to not be pulled by them in that one direction and we can take this other option, which is say, facing the puddle with a little switch ollie, for example. So just do your best to just relax as much as you can, become aware of those emotions and just commit to staying in your switch stance. So I'm just gonna quickly interrupt this video to say that if you're liking it and you're getting value from it and you wanna do me a favor, one thing that you can do is to share the video of someone that you think might be hyped on it, to give it a little like, a comment, maybe you subscribe. These are things that really help the algorithm boost the video and it helps the channel grow and I would massively appreciate that. And if you're like, mate, I don't wanna do you a favor, then that's fine too. You can still stay and enjoy the rest of the video. So regardless of whether it's eating well or working out, research shows that we often overestimate what we've actually done. And I bet it's no different with switch skating as well, meaning a lot of skaters probably think that they skate switch more than they actually do. So one simple method to overcome this is just to dedicate a portion of your time to switch skating. So maybe you'll do 10 minutes at the start or 10 minutes at the end. The only thing I would say is that if you don't already have a lot of switch tricks on lock, that you can actually land consistently. I would say it's best to do this after you've actually gone through some warm-up tricks in your normal stance, just so you can get some more lands in at the start of your session, which is just gonna make you feel more confident for the rest of your session, and then when you actually try and skate switch as well. All right, and the final solution that's not only gonna get you so much better at skating, but also balance out the work and movements that each side of your body does, is simply adding variety and trying new stuff in your sessions. So many times we'll just end up skating the same spots over and over again, trying the same tricks over and over again. And not only is that gonna completely limit our progression and stop us from being able to take those tricks to different spots, it's also gonna keep your body just doing the same movements over time as well, which is gonna lead to these imbalances that I've been going over. So I just want you to get out and try a bunch of different tricks, try skating a bunch of different obstacles and get tricks on the nose and tail of your board, different slides, grinds and manis on both sides of your board, add in some different rotations rotations to your tricks as well. We all have one kind of rotation that just feels a bit more uncomfortable than other ones and as a result probably avoid trying tricks doing that rotation a bit more. So get out and just try different rotational tricks as well. Try focusing on the ones that feel uncomfortable and like I said not only is that going to help you work on these imbalances but you're also just going to get so much better at skating by adding in that variety. Alright so that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought down in the comment section below. Give me some feedback down there. Let me know if you want me to do other videos or how I can make these videos better. I really appreciate getting that feedback. So drop a little comment down below and I'll also be putting a link for part one to this mini series in the description as well which has got a bunch of different exercises that you can do off your board to work on these imbalances too and the combination of these two things these skate methods that I've been going over in this video and also those exercises are the keys to really working on these imbalances reducing that injury risk pain and getting you skating better so go check that one out if you haven't seen it already and subscribe for future videos coming soon that are just going to help you skate better and feel better as well so that's it for this one in a bit peace